Good morning. Welcome to Fort Laramie Country Church. We're glad you're with us this morning. As we head into this Thanksgiving season, last week we talked about being thankful and how to be thankful in the hard things. Well, sometimes I think it's hard to express just how to be thankful for, to God. Words just don't seem to do it. And so we're going to look at what God's Word says about that, and He actually tells us how we can be thankful to, to Him. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we again just thank You for the privilege of being here and coming into Your presence. Father, we want to live with grateful hearts. Use Your Scriptures right now to help us develop that. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, being thankful to God is showing actually in the way we serve and give others. We're going to look at that right now. We're in 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 15. We'll keep coming back to that text. We're going to look at a lot of scriptures today, but we'll keep coming back to that text. So keep your thumb in that uh, part of your Bible. It says, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, he has scattered abroad his gifts to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. Now he who has supplied seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store for the seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. Verse 11. You will make rich in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Now we're going to start building on there. We'll, we'll go look at some more scriptures here in a second as we, we walk down through that. But I want to talk on that. It says rich in every way. A lot of times we get thinking that rich has to do with money. And it absolutely has nothing to do with money. I have, I have when we talk about this kind of riches, uh, I have worked for a guy that's wealth was on beyond our comprehension. I mean, I couldn't even comprehend how wealthy this guy was. I managed to ranch for him. Um, and uh, I have never been around somebody that I felt was so poor. I mean, I actually hurt for the guy because money has nothing to do with rich. And yet, I have worked with guys uh, alongside guys that just... Uh, had a, just like everybody else, it seems, sometimes had a hard time rubbing two nickels together that were rich beyond comprehension. You know, uh, it says rich in every way. Now, First Peter 4.10 says it this way. Each one of you use whatever gift he has received to serve others, faithfully administering God's grace in various forms. There are some things in this life that make us all equal, make us all equally rich, you know, and we all get the same amount of time. We all get 24 hours in a day. And, and so that makes us all the same. It makes us all equal. We all have the same amount of time so that we can be generous on every occasion. When you give your life to Christ, you receive the Holy Spirit. You're sealed with the Holy Spirit, and it makes believers rich equally all the same. And it says the Holy Spirit has some fruits, something He wants to produce in our lives, and that's found in Galatians 5, 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against there is no such law. As believers, we all have the love, the joy, the peace, the patience, the kindness, the goodness, the faithfulness, the gentleness, and self-control so that we can be generous on every occasion. And in 2 Corinthians 9, 1 through 3, it says, Praise be to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion, the God of all comfort, 
who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. We are comforted in hard times so that we can be generous on every occasion. Last week, we talked about Corey Ten Boom. And if you were here, how she was in, in the Holocaust, she was actually in a prison camp. And, uh, and she had a hard time being thankful and how her sister helped her be thankful in some things. But one thing she could never really be thankful for were all the fleas. The place they were was virtually flea infested. But come to find out after the fact, the thing that protected them from the guards, from being molested or abused by the guards were the fleas. The, the guards were, were disgusted by the fleas and they wouldn't enter the cells that they were in because of those fleas. And Corey Ten Boom has learned to share that gift of the fleas, how God protects us and takes care of us in ways that we don't even understand. We learn to trust God with the pain and troubles, and it helps us get a different perspective on our fleas. You know, that testimony, I can't tell you when I read that, how comforting that was to me. That It just helped me understand that I don't need to understand everything. I don't have to grasp everything that God's doing, but that He loves me enough and cares for me enough and that He's in control enough that I need to be thankful. Marvin Williams says it this way, God does not comfort us so that we will be comfortable. We are comforted by God so we can be comforters. Whatever God has given you, to minister and give back to other people. And it may come in the form of fleas. Whatever we got, have gone through, God can use us to comfort others. We are blessed, as it said, to be a blessing. And then it says, it will revel, result in thanksgiving to God. Others will be thankful to God for our generosity. Our generosity points other people to our Lord. 2 Corinthians 9, 12. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of God's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. I wanna, I'm going to go back to the Old Testament, and I, and I looked up some phrases and some words because I was curious about being thankful and thanksgiving. And, and in 2 Chronicles 16, 8, and this is in Hebrew, it was, it was an interesting word study, but it says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord. I call upon His name. Make known His deeds among the people. The word thanksgiving there is actually yadra, if, if I pronounce that right. It actually means literally to use the hands physically. Now, we use our hands in a lot of different ways. We, a lot of times we cross our hands or like this when we pray or when we praise and worship God, we raise our hands. In fact, Psalm 134, 2 says it this way, Lift your hands in the sanctuary and bless be to the Lord. Psalm 63, 4 says it this way, Thus I will bless you while I live. I will lift my hands in your name. Psalm 47, 1 and 2 says it this way. Oh, clap your hands, all you people. Shout to God with the voice of triumph. For the Lord Most High is awesome. He is a great king over all the earth. Clap your hands is actually an expression of joy and appreciation to the Lord. Our hands are involved in almost every activity we do. I have a hard time talking without using my hands. And I think most people do. But uh, have you ever just felt like clapping your hands for joy? A lot of times in our, this is actually recorded on Fridays, so you don't actually get to hear the people that, as we worship and praise God. And someday we may be able to do that. But there's a lot of times when, when somebody talks about what God's doing in their life or what God's done in their life, and they think, people in the church here clap their hands because of joy and appreciation. I had, uh, I've got some grandkids, and there was one day, our grandson was actually being pulled in a little red wagon and nobody told him to do this. All of a sudden, he just started clapping his hands because he was expressing joy and appreciation. We, we really do that. A number of years ago, we had that total eclipse of the sun here and it drew quite a crowd. I wasn't down where they had the, the fort. They had quite a crowd down there at the fort and they said when that happened, people clapped because of joy and appreciation. It's expressed in our hands, our feelings. 
We use uh, hands all the time to express feelings. Thumbs up, good job, you know. We wave saying goodbye or hi, or we clench our fist when we're angry. Uh, we shake as a sign of friendship, or, or we put our hands up to say stop, you know. Or you pat somebody on the back with your hand to tell them a good job. We even use terms like, I'm going to wash my hands of that deal. Or we go hand in hand, a landing hand, let me give you a hand. We, we do, but let me read you something, Sikrant and Twyum. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of God people, but is also overflowing in many expresses of thanks to God. Being thankful to God is seen in our actions and in our hands. That's just the word we looked up in the, in the Hebrew there. It's an expression, and it's done with your hands. You know, but being thankful to God is seen in our actions, our hands. If you want to be thankful to the Lord for all He's given us, anytime you give or help somebody, you're a lending hand, you're saying thank you to God. Anytime we reach out, anytime we help, we lift up, carry, help somebody along the way, or give our time and resources, we're giving thanks to God with our hands. We're praising God with our hands. Giving back is how we say thank you, God, for all you've done for us. Have you ever done something for somebody and you wanted to write them a thank you, but you went further than that? You went and shoveled their walk, you made them cookies, you did whatever. It's just another way of giving back and saying thank you. We do the same thing with God. You know, thanks and giving go together. Those, those two words were meant to go together. Whenever we give back to God, we're expressing our appreciation for all He did for us, the way He's blessed us. We are saying, God, we're grateful for all You've done in our lives. It's seen in our actions. It's seen in our giving. It's done with our hands. 2 Corinthians 9.13 Because of the service by which you prove yourselves, men will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ, and your generosity in sharing with them with everyone else. You know, the biggest compliment that you can give somebody is actually to mimic them. You're saying, I want to be like you. I like the way you are. I like who you are. I want to be like you. Now, advertising companies have keyed in on this, and especially Wrangler, Wranglers, I met Wrangler jeans with bull riders. If you ever watched the bull riding, which is really an enjoyable sport, one of the number one fastest growing sports in America, actually, they said. But anyway, Wrangler's all over the place because all of a sudden these young guys start idolizing these, these young bull riders. They want to be like them. And if they wear Wranglers, I'll wear Wranglers too. They mimic them. They want to be like them. Uh, you know, it, it's really quite a compliment when somebody does something the same way you do it. Now, I want to tell you something. God's a giver. And when we give, we are mimicking Him. We are like Him. Listen to how God's a giver. In Genesis 1.25, God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. God's a giver. We're designed to give. God loves to give. If you think about everything we have here in the United States, or even on earth, no matter where you live, these are kind of all make us equal. God made the sun. We can all enjoy that because it gives heat and warmth. God made the air for us to breathe. It gives. God made clouds. They give shade. They give rain. God made the earth, and look at all it gives us. He made the seas, and think all it gives us. He made the trees. Think, all, or think of all it gives us. He made the chickens. and Think of what they give us. He made the cattle. Think what they give us. He made the corn. Think what they give us. See, we brought nothing into the world, and we're not going to leave with anything. Everything we have when we're here is a gift from God because He's a giver. He wants us to have life more abundantly. I have come that you could have life and have it more abundantly. And He's talking about, I want to give you something. God's a giver. He's, he, he, he loves us so much. In fact, John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Mark 4, 45 says, and even the Son of Man did not come to serve, to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom 
for many. We are created to give. We're created in His image. God gets His jollies by giving. We're created to give. We're, we're made in His image. God's a giver. We're a giver. And when we, we want to thank God, we need to mimic Him as a giver. 2 Corinthians 9, 7. This is jumping back just a few verses here. Each man should give what he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. That is why we should never give out of pressure or guilt. God wants us to give with the motive of gratitude. We give because all that has been given to us, and we're appreciative. That needs to be our motive. Not guilt, not, not a, I have to give, not another thing I have to do. You know, Nancy was leading a youth group when we were in Claremont. There was a young man who says, does God want us to go to church? And Nancy addressed it in a, in a very gracious way. And the guy goes, the young man goes, not another thing I got to do. Well, yeah, <laughs> we laugh about that, but we can get that way with giving. Not another thing we can do. You missed the point. Your motive's wrong. Your attitude's wrong. When we want to give back because of a grateful heart, it encourages us. It, it motivates us. It helps us want to do that. And it says that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ. Giving back to God with a grateful heart is how the world sees us living out the gospel of Jesus Christ. I mean, we can tell people about Jesus, but when they see that service with a grateful heart, they're seeing what we say in action. Jesus is real, and it's seen in your giving. 2 Corinthians 9, 14 and 15. And in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. God has a gift for you. We talk about giving. Here's something God wants to give us. He wants to give you something, and it's an indescribable gift. It's the idea that no words can properly express the greatness of this gift. And as I said in many times, Romans 6.23 says, The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. But one thing I know about a gift, and it's a principle of a gift, no matter who gives it to you, it has to be received. At Christmas time, and that's coming up on us after Thanksgiving here in a blink, it seems like, there may be a gift under that tree with your name on it and it's for you and it's an amazing gift but it has no value to you until you receive it a gift you can't make somebody take a gift jesus isn't going to force himself on you but he is the gift that gives us eternal life that's why he died on the cross to pay for our sins so we could come into god's presence and have eternal life but it has to be received and nobody's going to make you do that. We have a very gracious God, but it is being offered to you. It's a, it's a gift that we can't even describe. And it only comes through Jesus Christ. If you say, well, I've always known about God, and I've always known about Jesus, that's just knowing about the gift. Receiving the gift. Acknowledging that you're a sinner and that you need a Savior that you need that gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ is done by receiving Him. As many as receive Him, to them He gave the power to become the sons of God. If you've never done that, you can do that right now, right where you are. Just admit you're a sinner and that you need those sins paid for in Jesus Christ and ask Him to come into your life, into your heart right now. Right after this, there will also be You'll see where you'll see our web page and our Facebook page and how to contact us. If you'd like to know more about it, I'd love to talk to you about it. Please call. Let's pray. Father, we want to be a people of a grateful heart. We want our, be, our motive to be 
one of gratitude as we serve you and serve others. Father, give us that heart. Help us grasp how much we truly have to be thankful for in your Son, Jesus Christ. In your name, amen.